Okay. Good morning, good evening, boys and girls. <laughs> that that is correct. You are absolutely correct. It is once again time for our uh, uh yeah, military Sundays. Oh, whatever, man, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to answer this military question first, and then we will move on to Squirrels at War. Uh, before we start, <laughs> uh, because it is now apparently demanded of me, I will just reiterate that nothing that is said on this broadcast is should ever be considered investment advice. If you guys listen to what I say, and consider an investment advice and go and buy stuff because of that Ooh, well tough luck <laughs> well i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't actually expect anyone any of you to do it but uh yeah just in case right <laughs> but also i wanted to talk about um the record profits that were that were being sort of extorted by the miners, right? I think BHP came out with something ridiculous. Uh, let's see. So Rio did a twenty-two billion dollar profit. Yeah, yeah. BHP did twenty-three billion dollars worth of profit believe that can you believe that like what kind of recovery is that that uh, that it tells you that bhp which just you know like oh i guess i guess bhp was was doing fine but but still 23 billion dollars from uh from how much ago a year ago was it let me check it was um january to june 2020 was more 9.7 January to June 2021 was 23 billion. Let's double the profits over a year. Oh my god. Oh wow. Okay, Vale went from 6.4 to 20. And Anglo American um, PLC, I think. Yes. Anglo American PLC went from 3 to 11.5. That's a 400% increase. That's ridiculous. Also, don't don't no. This is not investment advice. This is just me, um, exclaiming at how ridiculous it is that this is a thing. <laughs> anyway, yes. Let's move on. Let's move on to uh, our our military operations question. Unless unless our our mining analysts would like to actually comment on this. No. I know you're in the chat. I've seen you talk. Like all four, four, five, five of you, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well. Yeah, well. Such is life, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. You can't. You can't hide from me forever. How dare you try to hide from me? Uh, oh, right, I forgot to uh, forgot to poke some people. Yeah, let me just uh, let me just do this real quick, and then okay. So let's let's yeah let's get uh stop talking about natural resources. We can come back to it afterwards. Let's talk about the military operations. Uh, so we start with we start with this situation. So you guys will remember, or at least the the how many how many how many boys do we have that that gave me an answer? Uh, can you can you can you just check real quick? I think it was like twenty odd boys that that I don't I don't I don't think we had any any of our female viewers answer this question. No, right? Yes. How many? Twenty four of you. 
that's that's a lot of homework. How did how did you guys manage to have the time to do all that homework? <laughs> well, regardless, um, so I, I I've discussed it in in the channel. So now I want to give sort of my interpretation of what this can look like. So a couple things to note: uh, black artillery is much better than gray artillery. So we're going to actually essentially deploy the artillery on as much artillery on the right flank as possible to stop this from breaking into our position. We're going to turn this around and then we're going to try to extract these forces with a potential death ride-esque sacrifice of this entire core. So let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, let me take this, so that'll that'll turn into black. And essentially, what's simply going to happen is all of the artillery is going to move across. Is is going to get force marched into 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 the eastern side. This infantry formation is going to turn uh, turn right to face whatever is coming here. These guys will try to retreat right because this is this is actually a difficult thing to do here if this cavalry even though they are dragoons if they retreat too quickly then these inf infantry formations will just get into the rear of all of this and this will be gone if they retreat too slowly they'll all just disappear right so uh yeah it's 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 a finessing thing it's uh yeah. <laughs> uh, let's set that to two. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so so if, essentially the phrase one really we can't even move much of this infantry. We can move these two divisions, we can move probably a division here. Uh, a couple of um, artillery here and that's about it because the first thing we need to do is to establish a line in this direction to to prevent this cavalry from crossing sort of into into what what is this into square d d11 and from d11 going south right because these are heavy cavalry which means that they will overrun all of our cavalry, uh, all of our um, artillery positions, and then we'll just be screwed. So let's let's move on to phase two, just so I can show what I mean by that. So essentially, infantry turns, moves into this position. Artillery turns into this position. We're going to take. Ooh, these been grouped. Why are these not grouped? Let's group them. Oop. Wait, what? Wait, what? I'm confused. Okay, so this should be one group. Excellent. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, okay. This is the second. There we go. So we're we're of course going to leave a set of artillery here because otherwise, otherwise this would just come through without any issue. Uh, we're going to try to have the defense sort of funneled in so that we get a um, a mild increase in 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 combat width so that we can actually shoot them down properly having said that of course blue rifles are better than our rifles which makes it even more difficult right is the background music too loud how about that well okay yeah, yeah. how about now okay okay so with those two having moved we're going to attempt to move this as well and essentially what we're aiming to do is we're aiming to establish this intermediary layer layer 
that our forces can fall back through without um, completely giving way to uh, a, a general breakthrough by red. And so by this time, oops, hello. By this time, our cavalry will have retreated to here. These guys will have retreated to here. We'll probably have seen kind of this kind of thing happening. Right, so at this point, once this flank is secure like this, then these formations can pull out of this area and uh, the, the general retreat will continue like that. Of course, like the blue and red artillery are not are not something for us to worry over much about, but that doesn't mean that, you know, getting bombarded feels nice, right? So, again, this looks something like this. And I'm sure by now, the cavalry will have tried to engage with the infantry here. And I, th I mean, like, suffering some losses, definitely on our side, but it should, it should have held the cavalry in this area. Which means that once the cavalry is here, it's going to retreat back Move them all back just a tad. There we go. There we go. Because any more than that, and we are actually in trouble. So <laughs> it's got to be like that. Uh, and so in in the west, the idea is actually to threaten the flank of these this entire core. Because this core overran what amounts to be three of our formations. So. If we if we sort of let it continue like that, then we'll be in trouble. So we have to threaten the flank of it, which means that it turns to meet us like this with its own artillery turning. And here's the problem. If if this core decides not to, we'll have to charge into it. Right? Because the the idea is that this cavalry this cavalry corps has to, really has to buy the entire army time because yes exactly exactly because this this is the um this is one uh how do, how, how do you say it one end of the pocket one side of the pocket this is the other side of the pocket and we can we're currently holding it sort of firmly ish with our dragoons and an entire infantry corps and our artillery, much superior artillery. We're bringing in reinforcements to that. And once this area is clear, and we'll, we'll clear this area if we're if ever able to retreat from here, but once this area is clear, then we can sort of establish another line on this end to attack in that direction. In fact, actually, we should probably be moving one of these infantry divisions and having it face in this direction as sort of rear guard, right? And yeah, that sounds about right. Or two. Or two. Because these guys wouldn't get here in time to stop the if there were a breakthrough, if there were a breakthrough, these guys wouldn't get to the east quickly enough to stop the breakthrough. There's just no way, right? Like that's that's five, ten, fifteen kilometers worth of march, and so you wouldn't expect them to be able to do so. So it might actually be better to do this. But we're definitely sending our artillery in that direction because there is just simply a lot more manpower in that direction. And also, like, you know, provided that we can pull this out in time, we do have extra artillery pieces here. Right, so we'll, we'll, we'll essentially, we'll end up with three on the eastern flank, three on, uh, 
three on the eastern flank here, three on the western flank here. And, it, and that allows us a little bit of then, um, I guess, it'll give us local, 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 uh, um, local tempo advantages. Yes, because because of the range of the artillery, right? Like these Krupp guns that we've talked about. Let me see. The Krupp guns that we're, we've talked about, the C64, are much better than the four pounders that the French would be using at the time. Uh, we, we've given them to the British, but essentially that's that's the same thing. We're, we're just going to assume that they're the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. It just, 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 just go along with it. Because the British guns at the time weren't exactly, you know, like life-threateningly different. Uh, the 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 German forces, uh, the Prussian forces, really did have an advantage in terms of um, artillery, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is phase two. Let's go to phase three. <laughs> well, I guess I guess in the future I could actually turn that into sort of like its own dedicated mini stream towards that segment, but then I wouldn't stream that day, right? Because remember the 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 promise was once a day, so if I did do it that day then i wouldn't do it again so maybe maybe it'd be nicer if we just you know kept it a public stream uh yeah the 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 old public donor i don't know what happened to him actually he's uh, a sponsor he's he's kind of disappeared so <laughs> well i mean it's 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 genuinely not the end of the world though right like i'm not I'm not gonna begrudge someone if they find my content not as exciting as I find it. Like that's that wouldn't be fair on anyone. So this core was reconstituted. The artillery have been pulled back, and so we're we're a we're able to now form this coherent-ish line with a weak center. Um, but you know, like this line is still being pursued. But the idea again is that you know like we're, we're trying to extract these formations from their attacking uh, attacking zones right and that's that's a lot more difficult than 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 it you than we would normally imagine so yes exactly exactly especially especially because they will still be ch be chased when you're leaving yes <laughs> That's right. Um, my our, our friend Sidewinder actually just just uh, I guess I guess you compared the crop with the Raya uh, four, right? The range is dramatically different. Like we have we have such an advantage in range with the Krupp guns that it is it it, it really is what's keeping us alive because these guns technically at this at this range cannot hit us. Of course, our guns can't hit their artillery positions, but anything gets closer, it is fair game for the guns. And that's and that's what's keeping sort of this really weak Dragoon-based center alive. Right, like, n not only the fact that there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of combat width for Red to fully deploy, but also the fact, you know, with, with less combat width, we're able to deploy our guns much more effectively. So that's done for this. We're going to move in this direction. So essentially this core, we're going to say that we're lucky and they're not trying to sacrifice themselves and us. Um, so you know the there's this is just a screening force that's keeping them sort of at bay while while we're trying to do the rest of the retreat. Let's see, we've done that. Excellent. Uh, excellent. So this is actually going to back off just a little because because these guns are 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 like shrapnel is actually kind of dangerous towards horses as well, especially at close distances. 
Because, like, you know, once a horse is wounded, the rider is basically gone. The rider can't possibly, like, walk and chase after after ga galloping horses. Not, not, not even galloping horses. Horses are moving at a trot, right? So, definitely you don't want to be charging into artillery with... Especially uphill, actually. Especially uphill into artillery with horses. That's that's just asking for trouble. So this is good. These three is fine. I think this will be a five phase type of thing. So once we have phase phase four, will be a a general retreat and a sh and a continuing shortening of the line. So our artillery are moving a little bit further in this direction, probably like this. The Dragoons themselves have now sort of, you know, they've, they've served their purpose. They've managed to buy enough time for the Lion Infantry to, to settle themselves. The opposing side is, um, it's, the Fre it's the one that the French were using at the time. Let me paste that into the chat. The opposing side is using this. You'll find that the the range on that is a lot less. So essentially by by this point in time, you can see that we're starting to form this more coherent infantry line that is forcing blue and red to charge up a hill to get at. Which is which is difficult, right? Especially into artillery fire, especially into sort of into the reinforcements of of black, and we are actually freeing up these dragoon formations to go towards the le left. Ah, yeah, no worries. N not you lot. <laughs> Uh, I don't care if you lot are are, are worried or not. <laughs> so for this is looking like this. You know, there's probably going to be some artillery that's that's moving into here, but they're not going to be any, able to do anything. Like even if a uh, red advances to try to force this, there's enough artillery. Uh, artillery fire to, to to really like keep them at bay downhill right so so a charge up a hill is a difficult difficult thing and you would never you you would never do it unless you absolutely had to or i guess you were at uh, at a dramatic advantage which in this case you're you kind of not because this is this is still a pitched open field battle so you are still at the mercy of artillery and even though yes you you could potentially be sniping at the black uh, black infantry because you outrange them by far you are not out of range of their artillery right so as long as the artillery is still strong there's no way you can you can you can you can safely or as long as their artillery still has ammunition, there is very little that you can do to safely snipe at the forward formations. And that's much, uh, and that that's not even including the fact that yes, as dragoons, you know they're not ideal um, heavy cavalry, but that doesn't mean they can't perform a charge. Like you, you can still, you you still have to sort of be on the lookout for a counter charge from the cavalry. And sure, yes, you could you could you could still tear them apart with your rifles, but can you tear tear them apart if they're coming at you from all sides? That's that's uh that's a difficult question, right? Especially if their own artillery are supporting that that charge. <laughs> no, see, no, no, no. Well, the the disagreement isn't that that the charge would somehow win the battle. No. Uh, it's that a, a a commander can order a charge that he knows will fail if it means that it buys time for the rest of the army to get into position to be able to defend itself properly, right? Yeah, 
Yes. Oh, good question. What happens if we, like, once we get into this this southwestern area, right? Um, <laughs> I didn't really plan that through. Uh, let's 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 just say that there will be reinforcements. Actually, let's do this. Let's make a nice gigantic arrow that is like nine point font. And say that as long as you can hold on, there will be reinforcements. There we go. Right? Like that. So, yeah, as, as long as you're, you're holding on well enough, there will be reinforcements. Actually, let's, let's say there will be reinforcements from two sides. And I might actually use this. Ooh. That's actually not a bad idea. Okay. I had thought we would be done with this particular um, scenario, but now, now we're not. <laughs> uh, no, because because this this will actually be an interesting from a uh, blue and red perspective. Because once, uh, once once black has a victorious retreat, um, you know, blue and red will be in a position that is that is still difficult to fight up. Right, and yes, this city, this city will be difficult. But if Black just takes possession of a few houses, that that just well, not a few houses, but like a, a district of this uh, of the city, then then it it'll just devolve into into house to house fighting, and you you're just not gonna get anywhere. Anyway, all of that aside, let's let's finish up. Um, let's finish up the fifth day, which will is not not the fifth day, the fifth turn. The dragoons have successfully been um, what am I saying? Have successfully been pulled back into a sort of support position. They can ride forward to act as rifles wherever is needed. So that's actually really good. The Let's say the flanks are fairly secure. So between these two uh, formations and then the cavalry corps, the dragoon corps, we have pinned. In fact, we can even say like we have one going up here, which means we have pinned this core in place. Right, like with something like this. We have pinned, pinned this core in place. And so because of that, we would consider this this kind of movement where we end up in a line like this, forcing uh, red and blue to charge up a hill towards us. We would consider that a, a, a bit of a victory, right? Because we didn't lose many... We lost manpower, sure, because you know fighting will oh, you will always lose manpower in fighting. But we have sort of kept the integrity of our army in, in, intact, and we have sort of we have generated this position that, that when reinforcements do arrive in in theater, that we can um, attack into this sort of overstretched formation right because you know the rear of this is all open and if depending on what we get in uh, on the bottom right we'll have the ability to 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 regain what we wanted which is to cross onto the east side of the river and to s surround city a essentially yeah like take over this valley and and that's all that nice industry and major transportation route that we can then use. Strategic, yes. Okay, so that's it for, for, for this particular military question. Any questions before we move on? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, 
yes, I, 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 I suppose you could use that river to um, transport the raw materials that BHP has mined in the bottom right. Um, for those who came late, I started the, 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 the broadcast by talking about the fact that I didn't, that this was an investment advice, but I wanted to talk about how much profit the mining companies had made and have announced over the past, I guess, two weeks, something like two weeks. And, you know, like we we're talking about how so, uh, one mining company made four times the profit compared to compared to last year. And yeah. And so they're saying that uh, this river could be then used to ferry that profit, whatever. Like. <laughs> uh, okay. If there are no other questions, let's move on. Yes, yes, yes. Because I actually really want to do this. Because we're getting into a really fun era for the for the squirrels. So what's happening is actually that... Uh, just a quick recap. Oh, wow. You guys heard the car, right? Yeah, that was... Okay. Some someone's desperate to show off <laughs> I can hear the engine even like what is that like a kilometer or two away wow anyway so the what happened in the meantime since last time was uh, army uh, the eastern front of the collective which had this gigantic salient was forced to give up the salient and now uh, is is there there are in a bit of Pro, uh, add a bit of a problem because the bulk of that army is stuck south of this uncrossable railroad desert where uh, no squirrel dare, dare cross right <laughs> um, and so there's now a race on between um, the first army in the south and the technocracies, uh, technocracy, technocracies, uh, Pomeranian cavalry units in the north to hit these particular points, crossing points, because once you take those crossing points, it makes it very, very difficult to to have this army go north. And that's, that's tragic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but even worse is actually the fact that the 5th army here has now completely lost contact with the Eastern Front. Well, not completely. We'll, we'll talk about that. But, you know, there there are emergency lines of communication that go back in this direction. But that means that, that, that means very little for because by the time any request gets to front headquarters and gets back up north, things will already have completely changed. So in in this very first part, what we're going to see is we're actually going to see that the 5th Army decides that it cannot really hold this long extended line and that it must retreat sort of in, in the northerly direction because its own rear is completely open, right? Like if the 2nd Pomeranian were to turn more left the headquarters of the 5th Army w would be in trouble. So... What about in the West? We we'll, we'll get to the West. Don't worry. I really just... Like, I really want to talk about this because this is fun. Because I'm having fun. <laughs> Seriously, how dare I have fun? Oh my god, the nerve of this Muses boy, right? Like, how dare he? Talk about things that bring him joy. That's that's oh, the 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 gall. Oh my god! Seriously, you guys shouldn't be paying. What a what a friggin' douchebag, right? <laughs> the humanity, indeed. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so so the 15th Corps that was, you know, focused on on maintaining this front line, of course, would 
follow follow the 60th core acid retreats with its own sort of artillery following along oops and so these lines i should say are are very much um they're not firm like world war one-esque you know trenches uh, parallel trenches that 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 try to um the where 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 everyone has enough force to man basically everything and so therefore you can't get anywhere these are more like concentrated divisions with you know like a regiment perhaps sitting in middle just to um just to to hold that line of communications and similarly between the two core you know like there's still some minor attacks going on but this is the fifth army right now has four divisions and a single engineering core is it uh, engineering regiment it's not going to be able to launch any sort of like concrete attack against an enemy that is basically the same size so you could imagine that with their um we have established that the technocracy has better better training better officer training better nco training and, and they're more aggressive in their attacking style which means that they are able to take better advantage of these types of situations where um, where you do have this this uh, weakness that to be exploited and so that's why we're going to see the where my arrow oh no I got the arrow oh that's not good okay let's bring one back here I know it's tragic Tragic. <laughs> uh, to paraphrase, oh, the humanity, right? Um, we're going to. <laughs> the Fifth Army is essentially saying that it must pull the 60th Corps back to at least commercial road, like this line here, because this will give it a better. Um, it'll give it a natural defensive position. Sure, sure. You you can you you have these these places where you could fight, sort of fight for every inch of ground. But that's 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 costly on manpower, and in fact, that's that benefits the side that has the uh, the better tactics and the quicker command and control. And so that's why it's it's uh, it's much better for the collective to get themselves behind a nice sturdy line and try to keep their flanks intact right and and so that's what what's going to happen here so let's move these guys so obviously the pomeranians even though they've moved they're not exactly um they're they're, they're not exactly line infantry even though they are dragoons right so they could uh they could come down and They'll, I'm sure they'll leave a company to um, hold this until the actual line infantry appear. But they they won't be able to do it for um, oops. They won't be able to do it for long, and that's not the point of them anyway. So ooh, that's a lot of divisions that are moving in this direction. So the eighth is now responsible for that and for. This. this is gone. In fact, actually, what am I saying? So this is gone. This is... Oh, wait, no. That one remains. Right, we have to move the first army. But not all of the first army, because the sixty-second corps, the uh, sixty-second division has to stay here and monitor this until at least everything catches up on this end. And the fifty-eighth is so because because the everything has been pulled out from the salient there's no point in remaining in this even this rump of a salient so all of these formations are getting pulled out and in fact the entire 52nd corps 
is getting transferred to the southern front because right now that's that's where they're needed the most so let me just move that over these guys are being transferred to the southern front which does mean that uh, the 31st division is now under the command of the 58th and the uh let's leave fourth army headquarters let's leave that here and the 63rd is now under command of the 52nd and we'll see how that goes so these guys are now here and they're still retreating right like there's no point in in even the combat engineers staying in there so th those are very expensive troops that are much better used somewhere else And this is actually a opportunity for both the collective and the uh, the technocracy, because suddenly you know, like this eighth core is now free, which means it can move in this direction or it can move towards the south to uh, to help the assault, right? So this. Good question. Could the squirrels, could a say like you you say like maybe a, a division's worth of squirrels hitchhike on on some trains and just like land right here for an in depth, deep, like deep um, behind enemy lines kind of raid, right? Uh, yes. Short answer. Uh, no. Long answer. <laughs> Even then, even though no is a shorter word than than yes. I I mean I can't tell you the long answer, and the long answer is that it's it's not worth it, because you don't know what will happen, and if you don't know what will happen, then you're essentially throwing those formations into 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 the wind, and you're going to sacrifice them, and. Really, at this point, the the collective doesn't have the luxury of doing so, right? Like right now, there's a giant gash in their line. You 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 can't you 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 can't like if you have three divisions here that are able to embark and strike in this direction, it's better to just like line them up here. It's just it's just better because. <laughs> Well, okay, let me give you an example. Um, you are from Massachusetts, right? Yes, you're, you're, ma you're, yeah, 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 Red Sox boy. Um, so, so, if, if Canada were to invade and to invade through, like, Vermont, <laughs> You wouldn't let them reach Massachusetts because you could form a deep strike on, say, like, Rochester. Like, Canada has already gotten to Rochester and gone past Rochester. You, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't move those divisions in such a way that they can, they can attempt to do a deep strike that doesn't even completely cut off anything, right? Like, the Canadians can still come over from Kingston. So... And well, not Kingston, though, you know, you know, slightly farther, uh, farther, farther northeast. So, a deep strike like that can only work if it is completely game changing, and in this case, it's not. That's that's really all all we're saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah, you you would definitely get response. You might even move the lines in this direction. In this position and in this position but you are not going to like if you have enough forces to completely cut off all of these formations you are they they they, they probably wouldn't be in this position to begin with yes exactly yeah yeah, yeah. oh oh i just checked the time okay uh let's <laughs> let's hurry up just a little bit Well, because I don't want to keep you guys for too long. 
And also, I don't want to be here with you guys for too long. Because you guys are annoying. <laughs> uh... No, he didn't. Um, Sidewinder, my friend, are you still here? <laughs> There's some claiming that, uh, that after yesterday's, um, after yesterday's interview that you'd like my friends in the Discord, those, those childish lawyers and, and, uh, the like, that you like them more than you like me. Can you please disabuse them of that notion? Or, I mean, com confirm it if that's truly the case, you know? <laughs> so the 16th didn't end up actually doing any of that. It is now pushing into this... this uh, what's going on here? Let's do this. Excellent. Then do this. There we go. See, he doesn't even know you guys. He doesn't even know you guys exist. For all, for all, for all he knows, you guys could be like a figment of my imagination. There you go. See, no, no. Definitely, you guys. See, you, you guys aren't. And besides, who who would even enjoy conversing with you? Love? Like, seriously, I I only do so because I'm being paid to do it. <laughs> uh, well, okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll readily admit that I don't actually mind talking to you a lot. It's 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 fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh. Can you can you not say stuff that I can't repeat, like on stream, especially if the stream is public, like that? That's just mean. Like I'm I'm going to be like laughing my head off, and then I can't actually explain why I'm laughing my head off, and people will just think I'm weird. <laughs> I suppose that's true. People already think I'm weird, so it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't change anything. We are doing this 39th. Make sure that's clicked. Here we go, 60th. So 39th is now moving in this direction. There we go. Okay. So formations here are good, here are good. And the 8th is now in this direction. And the 8th division is actually the. Um, the 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 what am I saying? Army Army Group Reserve right now. It's acting as Army Group Reserve. Uh, this is a Army Divider, and yes, we do need that because we need that here. The Second Army is essentially the 12th and the 15th Corps, whereas the Fifth Army is this giant jumble of squirrels that are all desperately running towards the east. Yeah, exactly. So let's go here. Yes, I know I'm taking a long time, but you know that's just because there's a lot going on. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not gonna shut down the stream after the hours up. Like you're free to leave, but like. <laughs> We have a counterattack that's been going on on just north of Gresham Street, uh, and that, of course, once again the collective has overextended their lines, and once again the uh, the the answer that the technocracy has is you know, counterattacking. Because exactly because that's all they know how to do really. Like, the, what else would you expect from them by this point, right? And and strictly speaking, his, uh, the historical inspiration for technocracy is essentially like like that. Like even in fence, 
their their method is usually to counterattack as hard as they can and 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 to defend as hard as they can and and that's you know it's admirable in in a strictly militaristic sense so this has and see just to answer the criticism of our friend who has complained that I wasn't talking about the Western Front enough. Here you go, the Western Front. I hope you're happy. <laughs> the uh, engineer, combat engineers are suppressed. Uh, there is a lot of um, artillery now on this side as well, which means that, you know, like, after, after, after being being completely overwhelmed by the engineers for a bit and you know having having essentially pushed been pushed this far out there is now a counter-attacking potential for the for the technocracy and that comes in the form of the first 38 uh the circles that end yes yes artillery strikes essentially the circle is the range at which uh, where or not the range the area where you would expect the artillery strike to happen and the t is just you know where the sort which which unit the artillery artillery strike itself is coming from yeah oh excuse me okay uh let's see this has moved on Nothing is going on here. These these are very boring lines because you know these are almost like trench like lines now at this point because they've they've es essentially been static for so long, especially down here, right, with the Millennium Bridge and whatever that line is. I can't remember what that line is called. Sermon. Anyway, oh, I should I should do this just just to show that there is really a no man's land in this path. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 because this street m ends up forming a nice little. Um, it it allows you to use this building as a very good um, sharpshooting platform, which means it's it's simply difficult for for Red, the the collective, to establish it, establish itself down here. Okay, okay. 52 minutes, oof. Okay. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to soar on. <laughs> this attack is now intensifying. But like, these these um, engineering units we are at the end of their... Um, at the end of their fighting ability anyway. So we've gone through most of essentially what I will say for the rest of this day because um, we're just going to see this situation develop. Right? Like we've seen the breakthrough just north of the rail line. We've seen a breakthrough here on the south southeast and one on the northwest, and we're just going to propagate that through and see what happens. So the sixtieth has to kind of run away. And runway does runway in this kind of direction. Oops. And so we're actually going to delete these two lines. I'm gonna keep that one. And just completely redraw it. Essentially uh, the collective line now looks like this. And it's still dangling on the left, like it absolutely it's it still is right. It's just now that its left is not no longer no longer so close to the Pomeranians that it needs to worry. Uh, the fifteenth kind of lost itself because you know its its enemy has disappeared. But at the same time, because the sixty fourth has disappeared from this 
outgate south south of that the 37th is able to move up into here and to stop that attack get that set up and then in the meantime this is essentially what that looks like This and the separators between core, army core is right here. Fifteenth is now up here. The fifth is still on its way, and now it's it's got a nicer place for it to go. Let's make sure we have this. Excellent. Yeah, because once once the fifth artillery regiment is here, it can actually strike at most of these positions. That's not to say it will, just that it is in a nice central area, right? Uh, we'll move this in yet, like that. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So of course, this no longer needs to exist. Actually, we'll keep it. We'll keep it just to show the difference between the second army and the fifth army, which is... We don't even know what the fifth army is doing, really. <laughs> well, the fifth army has a lot of formations, right? Like, this is, this is six divisions and two cavalry corps. And they are just kind of like going wild. Let's let's move all of these in this direction. Ninth stays here to face that. Well, they have to, right? Like just just because it's hard to cross doesn't mean a bridge <laughs> gone rogue. <laughs> I wonder where where they would go if they did indeed go rogue. Uh, but essentially, like the fifth, the fifth is now like it's it's striking as deep as it can while maintaining some amount of uh, connectivity to the second army to its left, and so it's it it's probably going to end up looking like something. If there's no red army coming from the east, then it's probably going to have enough cover. You know, to the south and to the to the east, and it's going to attack westwards. Why westwards? That's a good question. Um, partially just because it is, it would help free the rest of the first army group, right? Because right now all of this is in very very difficult and very. Um, very difficult and very manpower intensive manpower intensive um, static warfare and the technocracy does not like static warfare so if it can get its formations into the rear of the fifth army and the third army the collective ones and then just roll them up completely delete all of these formations then then absolutely you will you will see like our boy elm even dissolving his army group headquarters just so these independent armies can do what they do best which is just like not not pillage but like you know um how, how do i explain this the pro so so just just going back to the inspiration for the technocracy which is the prussian army of the um in 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 the 1860s and 1870s with our boy helmut von, von moltke Motka the Elder, sort of planning all of these um, grand campaigns with disparate armies that all come together at sort of one point to um, hit an enemy army in the front, in the rear, and in the side, to f to create these kinds of really concentric attacks that breaks an army apart. And it was practiced, you know, to very good effect after 1870. Um, both in World War One and World War Two, but 
but really like the Prussian officer corps was bred to be a bunch of rabid attack dogs. Like they, 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 they <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny to see them being described because a lot of them are, you, you wouldn't expect them to be so bloodthirsty and just like rabid based on, based on, you know, like, like, like the uniform and how, how cultured the era claims to be. But but that is that is really it, it it very much is how how they were right like um, Blücher Blücher which who is the uh, the Prussian general that was in charge for most of the Na Napoleonic Wars uh, he was known are, as just like marshal forward because literally all he wanted to do was move forward and attack and that was enough like between between the aggression. Of the officer corps and and the aggression of the commander and the ability for the the army to react to um, to, to to novel situations that was enough to bring Prussia and later Germany like massive amounts of of of, of victories. Right, like in World War One, especially, it's some, uh, the victory at Tannenberg against the Russian Imperial Russian Army was of of similar stature, just because you, you like they were technically at a disadvantage, and yet they still just kind of like kept attacking until until the Russians just gave in. It's it's yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm a nerd. What are you gonna do about it? It's it's fascinating stuff, though, right? Like the 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 idea that this type of military really evolved from just just the desire to attack over and over again. That's that's fascinating to me. So anyway, uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. We have created a nice little breakthrough here. So the 55th division is under uh, a little bit of strain. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Oops. Yes, actually, actually, yes. Um, Patton. Uh was was in a similar way and was similarly successful for a lot of the same reasons um that's not to say it was all Patton's own genius right like his own subord subordinate commanders who were a uh, chip off the old block and that's really what helped the fact that you could say um tell tell oh what's his face I can't remember and I'm not gonna look it up now because we're we're already at the hour mark um, suffice it to say, yes, aggression in war a lot of the time works because it helps to give you the initiative. And a lot of the time, the initiative is what matters now in, in short wars, for sure. And that's why we actually saw the technocracy falter quite, quite often in this long, agonizingly long running series because they've gained the initiative and then lost it and suddenly were on the back for, for a long time until they could regain the initiative and make another breakthrough. So this gets pulled in this direction. Yes, 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 I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. <laughs> but any of you are free to leave at any time. Like don't 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 stay if you if you're busy, right? Like don't don't tell me you're busy and then rush me and then still stay for however long I'm I'm broadcasting. That's just not cool. Uh, <laughs> it's not, bro. So the eighth gets to move in this direction. Because this has now been liberated. 
so the 24th has moved into this section and so this tunnel is now is now um, in technocratic hands which means that that of course can move away uh, we're going to wait no in that color excellent the eighth itself is going to move down into this direction I think yes Oof. second army third the supply and maintenance the fifth the fifth is now in here and I think we're just going to have the eighth sort of take over in this direction that's that's the interesting thing like core core army core headquarters tend to lose and gain divisions depending on where they go where they go like the division remains the most intact unit for good reason right because it is technically the unit that fights the most coherently and any any larger than that and it's like oh, you start to lose that coherence. Yeah, in fact, in, in modern days, we don't even have really, like, a division. Division, like, divisional level, like, in, in World War II, a division would be, like, 20,000 men, or, or depending, on, depending on where you were, but, like, anywhere between 10 to 20,000 men. In, in modern, modern arms, we never get that, that far up. Like, in the field, of course. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, because with reserves, if you reserve, it's different. Uh, did I do everything? Those guys remain the same. This has moved on. That has moved on. Oh, the first army hasn't moved, has it? No. Okay. The first army needs to move on. Like that. If you're asking why the first army is keeping pace and even overtaking the Pomeranians, it is because they are moving in friendly territory whereas these guys are not so they are moving they still have to deal with rare echelon forces security elements and all of that it's just i didn't bother putting that in because it shouldn't like those kinds of formations are so small that it doesn't even make sense to really have them on the map you just you just like say oh yeah and then that happened and that's it Double checking it out here. Oh, I didn't do this part. Oof. Really? I guess not. Okay. Oh, we need to wait. And we had 39th as well. Ah, oh, goddammit. Okay. So then the 63rd is going to have to collapse back into that direction. It's going to do. Oh, this fits basically, basically here. Excellent. Like that. Uh, the twelfth is now down here, and it's pushing into this direction. And so you can see that even though the first army is desperately chasing in that direction, it is not the end of uh, the end of the worry for Army Group East because there's still some amount of force that's coming from the south. And this is going to look like that. Yes. With the 16th sitting here, with the 8th probably sitting here. Which ones? 15 and 3rd. Oh, oh, you mean 8? Yeah. So, as I, uh, I think we talked about this. I've, I'm pretty sure we talked about this. Essentially, the 8th core will take over the 20th and the 39th and then these two will actually just continue to move southwards and to be fed into this area right like the the deeper you can go and the the harder you can turn against the reinforcements the better because if the 12th is able to actually my bad if the 12th is able to close off this road then the next crossing is here 
the next real crossing is up here, right? Oh, oops. So, so the 52nd, if it gets here and finds that this bridge is closed, oops. Oops, right? Because because the, then the next crossing is up here, and they have to they have to make a leap for that. That's of course like you know there there are still there there are ways you can deal with that, and they are closer, yes. But also you know like the technoc a technocracy is much better at movement if they're able to. So it's about it's about the same. Okay. We're almost done. Oof, an hour and ten minutes. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Everything's fine. Ooh, that's not fine. This is fine. So the fifty-six has managed to do this. It is going to do this. Um. Yeah, and then and then we're going to come here. The these formations are coming here. The thirty fourth is actually going to be blocking there, just like the ninth. Oh wait, no, I need that because once the tenth has uh, the fortieth has established itself here, it means that the rest of the technocracies. Uh, the collective is definitely able to come through and and um, form up on this area, right? Like we're going to see some fighting around here, obviously, yeah, absolutely. Um, but we're not going to be like it's not going to be the uh, the the easiest. Like if you could just hold, you know, a single small combat with a tunnel like this. So ninth is going to put this. Oops. That. Here. And here again, we, we see the general elm re of the first army group really, really not um, leaving himself much leeway in this because. <laughs> well, who knows, man? Well, usually. So usually, if you were if you were in command of, wow, that's that's a big front, right? That's 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 a pretty big front. And so, if you were in command of such a big front, it would be e it would be better to leave yourself some um, reinforcements, because if there's a break in any of these lines, you need something to deal with that. But that's not that's obviously not what's happening here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the fifth headquarters, let's say she establishes High Branch establishes herself at Mulberry uh, School for Girls. Excellent. That's that's serendipitous. Um, the tenth and the seventh are moving, moving as fast as they can into that corridor. Excellent. And let's deal with the. Southern part, the twenty-third, the twentieth. They're still on their route. Unfortunately, the twelfth division has beaten them to it. Well, yeah, I mean, w they were going to be beaten to it. Like, there was no way they could have gotten to the bridge beforehand. So, thirtieth is here. Here. Oh no! 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 Back. These, oops, this and this. Thirtieth, a thirty-ninth is attacking in that direction. That's a fresh for formation, so it's got got some more zest to it. Then, uh... <laughs> yes. Oops. That excellent. The fifth core is now down here. Now the fifth core has really four four divisions, but we're going to see the sixteenth probably be given over to the eighth. 
Urukai do not need reinforcements. They do not. I wish. Oh, I miss. I miss. I miss Tolkien. I might have to reread. Reread Lord of the Rings again. Oh my god. Okay, let's see what's what's happening here. This isn't up. The f oops. Because of the uh, rampant bombardment from the artillery corps, uh, artillery regiments, a lot of these are actually. Yeah, like like those lines are completely broken. So let's. Oh, wow, that's a big line. Must remember not to make such big lines. This is now up to here. Excellent. And then for red, we'll have that. Love lane, how pleasant. Down to here. Okay. No, it doesn't mean that there are no formations on the west side. It just simply means that, oops, that like a lot of them are 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 being are like leftover formations, like security elements, you know, like like um, headquarters security elements, uh, logistics officers, that kind of stuff. Sixth. Point and continues its own bombardment. This goes over here. Excellent. And so these attacks are pretty successful. Yes, essentially, essentially we um, we used to use the vision counters that would like stretch or 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 shrink depending on how wide the front line was. But I found that that really, really started getting into the way with the more divisions we had, especially like if I tried to cram like three or four divisions into a single, uh, single salient, it became almost a, impossible to, uh, to lay things out properly. So I had to go the World War Two way, which was just to, 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 to show the division by its by a little icon or flag and. You know, I chose the NATO symbol for that, but you could imagine like uh, any any sort of symbol being used for that. Like, big break here. The first army and the fourth army are cooperating against this area. That's fine. And this is all just. Oh, did I not do that? Oh, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. And basically exactly the same. Like as as of now, artillery and combat engineers essentially cancel each other out in in the grand scheme of things. Here we're good. Here we're at the last one. See, we're almost done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I technically didn't do it for you, my boy, but still. <laughs> okay, so the last part of the day. Let's let's just get it over with. Has now joined the first, and so we're we're going to see it actually 
uh, crop up here where where I talk about um, you know salience being very difficult for me to 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 show just how many formations how how much manpower or squirrel power pardon me uh, you can you can squeeze into a into a tiny little space and that's what we're going to show here we have three divisions facing uh, four ish right the twenty eighth is here. 25th is here, 9th, 4th, 7th is up here, 10th is up here, and the 1st is on this end, and the 2nd is now moving into uh, northwards. That can go away. And so let's let's draw the lines. Red. So this will go essentially up to this end here. And then similarly, we'll see. Oh, I, I changed color before I changed. That's okay. We'll change it back after. Like that. There we go. So red and blue, like, essentially the first army has jammed as much uh, manpower into into this little salient as possible, but right now it's it's sort of suffering for it just a little bit, right? Doesn't mean you can't. It just means it's difficult to really do anything with this. Because remember, what are what are what are the technocracy really known for? Well, concentric attacks, and how much more concentric can you get than 180 degrees, with the enemy backed up against literally a single road for for escape, right? And so that's what's going to happen. How did they get there? Um, essentially, the first Pomeranian really ran their their little puppies off so that they could dismount and act as um, act as infantry on this building, and that stopped the expansion, and that allowed the twenty eighth and twenty fifth to get into place, and then the twenty ninth and fourth to sort of like slotted in right, right, right there, right, and so that means. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you you can if 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 you know that it's important, you can force them to march. Even uh, even infantry, right? Infantry, you can you can get get like operationally or tactically, you can get up to sp speeds up to like six to eight kilometers an hour, but but you really cannot make them do that for more than a day or two. Like, like oh, I'm talking about humans now, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so we're moving on. Uh, the engineers are coming down in this direction. These guys are over here. Twentieth is over here. Twenty-third is moving in that direction. Actually, the twentieth is joining the one this end. Uh, we're going to have. And keep in mind, keep in mind, these don't have to be full divisions defending them if you are able to take advantage of whatever this is, right? Because this is. This is a. Um, and this is a lock. And so, literally, being on this building and on this building means this is close completely. Like, any, any charge has to go through this complex. Um, location, which means that it's 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 just not reasonable to charge through that. But that, of course, means that um, that everyone can move on like this. And so, this being um, the south of 
Oh, where are we? Docks, right? Yeah, yeah, docks. Um, really, if 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 we're able to cut off this and this, and the woods, of course, then then the southern area is completely cut off and will, will should be considered lost. And we shall see next time if that happens. I haven't forgot. I haven't forgotten about the western side. Don't worry. <laughs> um, the third army headquarters is now moving here. Main tent is moving in this area. Well, because now the action is over here, and we need to push a lot of the supplies coming into into this area, right? Also, this becomes an interesting, um, interesting uh, supply line. If we're able to open that. I think that's underground though. Yeah, that must be underground. That must be a tunnel. I, I remember there being a tunnel somewhere somewhere around there. And yes, I know I'm murmuring to myself. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> tunnel. Yes. <laughs> Is that what I sounded like when I said tunnel? Oof. So the technocracy has re regained a lot of its ground with the let's see something along this line. Oh yes, yeah, the the channel tunnel. That that's not there yet. There quite yet. That one is, uh, let's see, this is London, so that one's in Dover, so that's probably down here somewhere. Not Dover. Yes, Dover, what did I say? <laughs> Am I drunk? Um, no, I've only had, like, carbonated water, so I don't know why I'm like this. I just, just I'm tired. It's been a long Sunday. That's 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 what I got. Oh, uh, actually, actually, funny that you mentioned it. Someone on Friday, uh, one of the new kids, uh, decided he wanted to be really, really um helpful. <laughs> uh, I can just see the oh no's popping up in 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 chat. Um, yeah, he he decided he wanted to be really helpful. So he sent out, you know, a, a whole bunch of documents. Um, Friday, like thirty minutes before end of work, and um, everyone knows those documents, and everyone knows that professionalism means that if those documents get sent out Friday afternoon before end of end of day that they need to be dealt with before Monday morning. That's that's kind of just how that works. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they got sent out right before before end of end of work. So ah, that was my weekend. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to blame the boy, right? Like he is a good boy but the but like yeah no <laughs> uh, I, I i i can see i can see some people going i please don't be that professional um please never be that keen um nobody like when 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 you're that keen <laughs> um it's just like at the same you know like that's that's good that he's on top of it because this is actually kind of not even part of his duty it's just tangential to his duty so like you can tell that he's paying really good attention to what he should be doing or what he should be learning you know let me put it that way um it's just unfortunate that what he should be learning is um 
not to do that on Friday afternoon. <laughs> well, well, partially it's just because it it makes things easier if the documents were done on Monday morning, by Monday morning, by tomorrow morning, because that means uh, you know you don't have to spend Monday working on them. But that's because you spend all weekend working on them. So, you know, like, I mean, I'm all for 70, 70 to 100 hours a week, but, you know, I'm getting old. I'm almost 30 now. No, I'm not even close. But <laughs> uh... <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, you guys are definitely older. I will, I will admit that, but still, I've I've done my share of hundred hour weeks. I guess is my point. And I don't want to do any more of them. Yeah, I'm just uh, yes, I'm just cleaning up now. Just like some of these offensives that have been lingering can just stop. For example, these engineering. Uh, regiments can be pulled away which means that uh, the artillery can be pulled away or actually the artillery is not being pulled away it's being concentrated for um... no, I should not have done that there we go okay so the artillery is not being concentrated for um, retaking this area. And... Take one here. And go... Oh, what happened? Oops. Oh, okay. Just my computer can't apparently keep up with the amount of vectors that I'm throwing around. Which is kind of understandable, I suppose. Okay. Okay, I think I think we're done for today. Pretty sure that's it. Uh no, this can go too. So after a long harrowing fight, the first army and the fourth army together have retaken a lot of this area because they invited an overextension and then pounced into that gap. Uh, definitely General Elm of the First Army Group has... Oh, I talked into my hand, my bad. Has, um... Yeah. Yeah, this... This... I can't even explain this, really, because... Right now, there's a gigantic gap in the... the Army Group East's command, right? Like this, this, this is an issue, and if this gets cleaned up and pushed to the south, you can imagine that that's four, four um, rifle divisions, two dragoons that will be turned on this uh, on on the northern Fifth Army, even though the Fifth Army is technically fine right now. Right, like it's sitting, it's sitting with a dangling left flank that is very, very difficult for it to um, to deal with. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, and and so and so because of that, we're we're going to see a lot more being done up here. There are no reinforcements coming yet for uh, for red, but just likewise, there are no reinforcements really coming for the uh, the fifth army. Right, like both sides are basically drained completely. Like you, you could imagine some of these formations being pulled out to to be sent to the to the east, but that's still quite. Uh, excuse me, that's too far away to really do anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Oof, Ninety minutes of of me just talking to myself. Excellent. <laughs> well, and, and and to our friend Sidewinder, who is amazing and uh, definitely much better than you lot. 
<laughs> all right all right all right all right that's it for today so uh just uh, once again thank you everyone for watching um thank you for, to our sponsors uh from from the private club who have continued to keep the segment alive and in conclusion yes please download firefox please don't do chrome and oh question yes <laughs> that's right flex flex my friend sandwich you got this and yes to an answer the question theoretically yes you could see the 53rd and pull out of line to do something we talked about it just now but it is it is long distance right it is a long distance and we will see that actually um army group west will simply take on the fifth army and I, I actually need to add add some space up here because there is going to be some future operations up here that that we will be talking about yeah cool cool <laughs> okay 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 we're done we're done we're done we're done remember nothing that was said here is investment advice if you do invest your own fault on your own head be it and with that, we are done for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.